Welcome back, everyone! This is Geronitis, bringing you Feed the Beast 1710. Today, we are starting on episode 25, and today, we are going to be doing auto mining, or at least we're going to try to. Excuse me a second, I have to kill this creeper before he winds up... Don't you dare. Punk. Make me hurt him, I swear. Uh, in between episodes, uh, I did the bee breeding, and I also sorted my bees out just a little bit. We got the uh, hybrids over here. Uh, royalty plus other items related go in here. So all the queens and princesses are stored here. And over here we have pure drones. Uh, so we actually did fairly well. And uh, <laughs> it was kind of ironic when I when I was breeding in the last e at the end of last episode. Uh, the ones on the right that I was hoping be would become common, I wound up with a purebred cultivated setup. And then the ones on the left that I was hoping would turn out cultivated wound up common. And it's just like, yeah, that's about right for bee breeding. Anyway, so since then, I've let things run just a little bit. And we now have... Uh, I've put chocolate frames in here. Obviously, the chocolate frames have been destroyed now. But uh, it forced bred these guys to, uh, to get me some more cultivated bees going over here and here. And then down here... Nope, not there. Uh, here we go. We got the common guys are running as well, and the forest breeding of these guys. Uh, we now are have basically four apiaries running full blast with tropical bees. Uh, I've taken the proven frames that I had gotten from uh, stealing them from the villagers, and I put them in here to increase the productivity of those bees. Now I'm going to go away from them because first off they need to run for a while uh, and get me some products. I need. Uh, I need more propolis, and I also need uh, more silk wisps. So I'm going to let these guys run for a while while I get into the auto mining. But before I do that, I want to do one other thing specifically. Um, I want to make another squeezer real quick. Uh, actually, I'm walking away from the items I need to make the squeezer. But uh, let's see. We're going to need... One sturdy casing, glass, and it's either copper tin or bronze, and I don't remember which. But that's okay. Let's see. We're going to look it up real quick. It is the tin. Okay. No big deal. Let's grab six tin and throw ourselves a squeezer up real quick. Uh, this squeezer is going to be being used to squeeze honey drops, and we're going to be making some honey. There's a drum, and hopefully, if this works out the way I want it to, uh, we'll get some more propolis as byproducts of this. Uh, do I not have any liquid conduits? Could have sworn I still had some of those. That's all right. We can. Uh, I believe it's quartz... Fused quartz and conduit binders should be able to make some more of those. You might think I'm getting used to these things. I'm actually starting to remember uh, the recipes. And for me, that's saying something. All right, so let's see. That's going to be fine there. Toss this stuff back away. And that should be all I need. So we're going to go ahead and uh, one piece of power conduit. And then the squeezer. Squeezer gets power. I'm gonna take three stacks of honey drops. I don't want to use up too many honey drops because when you're breeding bees, uh, bealizing all the bees, you go through a lot of honey drops, and I mean a lot of honey drops. So always good to keep that in mind. Let's see that there. This on top of it. And we're going to set this to extract always active. Sweet. All right. We already have our first bucket of honey. Now we're going to let this run. Oh, sweet. We already got our first piece of propolis. Excellent. Cannot argue that at all. Second piece of propolis. Awesome. So hopefully um, we have, I think it was a, like a 50% chance of this. No, it's not 50%. It's not even. Uh, squeezer, 5%. 5% chance, and we've already got two. So we're going to let that run. Grab that block so it stops twitching out. And now we're going to get started with the auto mining setup. All right. Uh, the auto mining, the way we're going to be doing this is we're, we 
Well, there, there's actually a lot of ways that we can do auto mining. Uh, I'm going to go with one of the, I don't know if you'd call it the easiest, but one of the, the most convenient for me at the moment. We're going to be making ourselves a quarry. Okay, now we can make two different types of quarries. Okay, we can make the build craft quarry, which you've seen before, I'm, I'm, unless you, and well, if you're new to this, you haven't seen it before, but the build craft quarry uh, basically cuts a giant hole in the ground. You supply it power, and it basically digs a giant hole in the ground, starting from the top and working its way down. Uh, I don't want a big hole in the ground because I don't have a, an area that I'm set aside to have that running in. Um, <clears throat> Plus, it works from the top down, so uh, it takes a while to get to all the really good, juicy stuff at the very bottom. And when it runs into liquids, it really has a problem. Okay, So instead, we're going to be using the Ender Quarry. The Ender Quarry is from Extra Utilities, and the Ender Quarry works on a vertical uh, basis. Instead of starting at the top and working its way down, it starts at the top, goes down to bedrock in a single column, then moves over to another column, and goes straight down through that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get this made. The Ender Quarry, ooh, wow, is going to require a lot of interesting things. Okay, uh, first thing we're going to need is a diamond pickaxe, no problem. Uh, we're also going to need any kind of sapling, that's also no problem. Uh, Ender infused obsidian, we're going to need a lot of this, like a lot of a lot. And that is going to be obsidian around Ender Pearls. Okay, so that's not a big deal either. Um, after that, we're going to need a diamond etched computational matrix, and that is going to be burnt quartz, ender infused obsidian, and diamonds. So let me grab some of this stuff real quick, and let's make some burnt quartz. This is going to be a good thing to do. Burnt quartz in the block, of course. Now, we're going to need to burn this in the alloy smelter. Now, we can do this one of two ways. We can burn it in the alloy smelter, but if we do, we're going to have to switch it to furnace only. Otherwise, it will make uh, fused quartz instead of the uh, burnt quartz that we need, or we can not burn it in here. We can go make a normal furnace and burn it that way, but in this case, we're just going to do it this way because it makes more sense just to switch this once. Uh, we shouldn't need very much of this stuff or very often, so we can just go ahead and flip that back, and we should have what we need over here. Excellent. All right, so now, other than that, we're going to be needing the, uh, what did I say? diamonds and the ender infused obsidian okay so this is just gonna be a bunch of crafting let me show you a couple more pieces here and uh, and then i'm gonna craft this thing off camera because it's gonna take like five minutes of crafting and uh and you guys don't need to see that so uh this is gonna require ender infused obsidian uh eye of ender iron pickaxes more ender infused obsidian uh and i'm going to need two of these these are the endothermic pumps and uh, so I'm going to make two of these real quick. As you can see, they're not that big a deal to make. But I'm going to make the two of those and the diamond dash computational matrix. And then I'll come back to make the ender cores because the ender cores are actually uh, very unique items to make. So, well, actually, you know what? I'll just make the ender cores now and then I'll stop and come back when I finish making the other stuff. The ender core, what makes it more interesting is that you have to make a whole different thing that we've never made before. And that is called magical wood. Okay, magical wood is bookshelves with enchanted books around it and gold. Okay, so the gold is no big deal. Well, actually, the gold is becoming a big deal, and that's why we're doing this. We're doing this now before we run out of the stuff necessary to make this. <laughs> I need to start auto mining, but I don't have enough stuff to make the auto mining machine, so now I have to go manually mining to get more stuff to make the auto mining machine. Y you see where that becomes a problem? All right, so uh, <laughs> the other thing we're going to need is some bookshelves. That shouldn't be too big a deal. And at this point, we're going to get into the reasoning for my incessant need of keeping anything enchanted. You see all the different things that we have over here. Uh, we have all these uh, enchanted items that I've kept from the monsters that we've uh, killed over the, you know, ever since the pretty much the first episode uh, over in the auto miner. So... The reason that we kept those is specifically for this purpose right here. Okay. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take these bookshelves, put them in the center here. We're going to wrap the gold around over here. And I need to be kind of careful how I'm going to do this because I really don't have enough gold to do this if I don't do it right. So let's grab all of the uh, enchanted stuff. Now, it does show you that it uses enchanted books, 
But what it doesn't show you is that you can use these enchanted items instead of the enchanted books. It's pretty much anything that has an enchantment on it counts. Okay? And depending on what the enchantment is determines how much magical wood you get from it. Uh, the harder to get enchants will get you more wood versus the basic enchants. Uh, so this one having fire protection 2 on it is probably why we're getting uh, 2 magical wood instead of just a single. Okay? And for this, we're going to need... What did I say? We're going to need eight magical wood, I think. Oh, wow, that was sweet. That, that There's that bow. Power three. And then, yeah, two power three bows. Yeah, we're getting lots of wood for that one. So, yeah, keeping all these, you know, for is exactly why, you know, I, I did all this just so I could do this. Now, don't get me wrong. When I started keeping this stuff, I was keeping it because I didn't really anticipate having basically infinite experience at this point uh, I because I, I basically have infinite experience uh, because of the uh, killer Joe and the mob farm in the nether but I didn't know I was gonna have that so you know meh. so I mean it, it served a purpose I just kind of made its purpose obsolete rather quickly <laughs> all right so anyway we're gonna need a couple eyes of ender uh, actually, we're going to need a total of two eyes of okay, two eyes of ender plus an ender pearl, so that's three ender pearls for each of these. No, no, two eyes of ender. Okay, so one eye of ender, one ender pearl, so that's a total of four ender pearls for the two ender cores. Then we're going to need one ender pearl for this, so that's five. Those two will be in there with that. And then this will be six, seven, eight, nine ender pearls to make this setup. Do I have enough? I have ten. Awesome. All right, so let me craft some of this stuff, and I'll be right back when we've got it all together. All righty, there we go. We have the second endothermic pump now made, so we should be able to hopefully put this together. There's the diamond pick. Two ender cores. Ender infused computational thingy majigger, and then the two pumps, and of course, the one thing I forgot was a sapling of any kind. One sapling, and there we do. There we, there we do. There we go. We now have an ender quarry. Okay, now getting the ender quarry is just the first part. Okay, now how to use the ender quarry that's a whole nother story. Hey, I wound up with an extra bucket of lava. Sweet. I always like to keep an extra bucket of lava hanging out uh, you know just for those occasions where you just need a bucket of lava uh, anyway uh, basically to work the ender quarry uh, you need to set up a set of boundaries for the ender quarry to work within okay and there are two ways to go about this Really, guys? Is that really how we're playing this today? Uh, you know what? It's time to do something about these creepers. I'm, 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 I'm about ready to just take this episode completely off track and just do creeper annihilation or, I don't know, something. This is getting ridiculous all right uh well great all right well now that we've had a creeper blow up my well one of my front doors uh maybe we can actually work at uh, uh let me just get this uh let me get the door back up and we'll get back to this just a second all right now then fix the daggummit <laughs> There, I've got it all fixed. Now I can go back to recording. There, we fixed all the... There's a hole right there. I missed one spot. Stupid creepers. I think that's how it was. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I, I'm... Eh. Oh, that's supposed to be a block, not the... Ah, whatever. It can be that. So as I was saying before the creeper blew me up, well, blew up my house. I'm pretty safe from creepers, but my house is uh, decidedly vulnerable. Uh, to use the ender core, you have to supply it with power, and you also have to supply it with an area to work in. 
Okay, and there are basically two ways that you can do that. Finally get the door and it whatever, it doesn't matter. So we're gonna go ahead and place the ender quarry. Um put that right there, put that right there. I'm going to place the ender quarry right here. Okay, when you place it down, uh, you can see that it has a 10 million RF buffer that can fill up. And when you right click on it, it says analyzing founts. Yeah. What? Analyzing fence boundary found attached ender marker. How? I have never made ender markers. I mean, I did it in my test world, but. Quarry marker square and compete. Und okay, unable to take whatever. That's strange. I think I may have some weirdness held over from my test world. Anyway, um, not a problem. In this case, we can do this two ways. One, we can actually build fencing. Uh, just your normal everyday fencing like we have here. Uh, if you attach a fence to it and run a fence along a certain area, and then when you right-click on it, it will say, hey, we found this fence boundary, and uh, we'll work inside the fence boundary. As a matter of fact, if I have some fences... Oh, I have some fences, but not a whole lot. Eh, let me make up some fences, and I'll show you guys this, because it, honestly, depending on how you're going to do this, it might actually be simpler for you to do it this way uh, than to uh, do it the way I'm about to do it. The way I'm about to do it is more difficult and more expensive, um, and it's going to require you put together a lot of things, but it's also going to save me a lot of trouble. So depending on how you want to do this, you know, you can consider doing this any number of ways. Now, there's not any kind of uh, specific size needed for this. You can make it whatever size you want. Okay, so now I'm going to say this is the fence boundary. And yes, I missed a spot, but watch. When you right-click this, it says uh, fence boundary stops at 532, 69, 673. It basically says, hey, you missed a spot. So it'll actually point out if you make this a huge area, and you can make it as large as you want, as long as you're willing to run the fences, it will go as far as you want it to. So anyway, it told me that I was missing a piece there. So now when I right click it, it says, bingo, successfully established boundary. So now if I were to feed it power, it would work inside the fence boundary. It wouldn't work on the stuff under the fence, but it would work inside this fence boundary. Uh, now, this, as far as auto mining goes, this is a fairly small area to auto mine. And I actually don't want to do something this small. I want to auto mine a very large area. But to do a very large area, I would either have to make a whole lot of fences and then lay out all the fences. And not only that, but I would actually have to either uh, lay the fences out uh, above the current terrain or I'd have to chop through the terrain to run the fences in the terrain and therefore have it be uh, have it work that way. But I don't want to do that. So we're going to go with the other way to make this work. Okay, now I broke and replaced that specifically so that it would forget that it had analyzed a fence boundary, okay? So the other thing that we can do is we can go ahead and make ourselves some ender markers. Ironically enough, since it said it found some ender markers, which is kind of interesting. Uh, it's possible, now, when I, my test world, when I go to do the test world, I find it easier for me when I work in my test world to make a copy of my current world and then run it as my test world. And I did test this thing out in my test world, and it had the ender markers in this general location for me testing it out. So maybe it somehow, you know, worked across that. I don't know. Anyway, so it's a little bit strange, but whatever. All right, so what we want to make are ender markers, okay? So when we look up marker, we have the ender marker. The ender marker is two uh, ender infused obsidian and an ender pearl in a QED, okay? So we're going to need to make a QED. A QED, and I always do that. Every time I type Q, I automatically push U right after it. I just can't help myself. Um, the QED is going to require another diamond etched computational matrix. Not a big deal. We can make another one of those. Two eyes of ender and some more ender infused obsidian. And that's where we run into a problem. I only have one ender pearl left. Okay, so I have one ender pearl, and I'm going to need one, two, three, four, at least four for this. And then the markers are going to require basically two ender pearls, well, three ender pearls for a pair, and I'm going to need three of those. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm going to need some more Ender Pearls. And not only that, but to make things, the QED is just the beginning of it. Uh, we're going to need to make also something to work with the QED, because the QED doesn't work by itself. We're going to need some Ender Flux Crystals, and those are even more Eye of Enders. So yeah, we're going to need two Ender Pearls per Ender Flux Crystal, and I want to make at probably five of these. Uh, because otherwise the QED works incredibly slow. So uh, at least it's nighttime out there. Let's see if I can go get myself blown up and hunt some uh, some Endermen. So let me see if I can get some Ender Pearls, and we'll be back in a minute once I get some. And you know what? Uh, interesting side note. Before I cut on this, I'm gonna go over here and kill these creepers. And when hopefully one of them will drop something useful. There we go. Now, as you can see, when it comes to the Ender Zoo, we have new drops, okay? We got these, and these Ender Fragments are actually fairly useful. Five Ender Fragments can be crafted together to get an Ender Pearl. So, uh, since these uh, Ender Zoo monsters are very, very easy to come by, uh, I'm going to be killing those while searching for Endermen, and hopefully we'll be able to get enough Ender Pearls to get this going. So, we'll be back in just a minute once I've got some Ender Pearls. All right, this is just a bit too much for me. Uh, I stepped outside and immediately was attacked by a... Well, I was just out there. The Wither Witch and her Wither Cat decided that I looked like a fun time. So I'm not going to deal with them anymore. I'm tired of having them. Apparently fighting them hand-to-hand -hand is just not a good idea. So I am going to be making myself something that I am going to use to not fight them by hand. I am going to make myself a bow and I'm going to do some custom enchants. Oh, what do you know? I actually got the string necessary to make this while I was out there, so yay. I am going to make myself um no, oh, no, no, not that kind of string. That's why it didn't work. I was like, what in the world? Flame string. Flame string and uh, this is bloodwood from Natura. It's the uh, the in the Nether, the trees that grow upside down from the top of the Nether. Yeah, that's what this is from. So I'm making myself a bloodwood bow. I am going to go ahead and do some custom enchants on it and uh, get it really powerful. I'll probably use up all of my experience and uh, quite a few items, but I'm going to go ahead and make this bow. I'm going to make it um, not yeah power five. And probably get infinity on it. Maybe even give it knockback. So I'm going to do that off camera and continue the hunt for Endermen. So give me just a minute. And we'll come back with some Ender Pearls. Alright, there we go. We've got my Power 5, Infinity 1, Unbreaking 3, Punch 2, Bloodwood Bow. Uh, we do have the mod on here. Uh, I think it's called Infinity Bows. Uh, it basically is a mod that makes it so that you don't have to have an arrow in your inventory to have uh, infinity work. If you have infinity, it just fabricates it out of nothingness. So yeah, power 5, infinity, unbreaking, and punch. That's going to work out rather nicely, so this bow is really nice right now. I actually want to make one of these flux-infused bows, and that would be really cool, but uh, I don't have the stuff to make flux electrum. Uh, mostly because it requires the induction smelter and uh, pyrothium and flux electrum blend, uh, which is going to require um, a fluid transposer. I will probably get into that probably pretty soon, just because that's one of the most powerful bows. Uh, but aside from going through all of that, um, yeah, this is the this is the bow I want to use. Now the problem that I have now is I spent the rest of the night. Uh, yeah, I spent the rest of the night making the bow and it's hard to hunt endermen in the daytime so i want to do something that's going to make it so that see i've got the bed and the bed's going to make it so i can sleep through the night and get it daytime again but i also want to be able to sleep uh force the night to come and i'm going to do that we're going to make an imperfect ritual stone an imperfect ritual stone from blood magic is basically going to make it so that i can transform the day into night at will. Let's hop over here to my blood magic area. And you know what? We're just going to use this orb for just a second. Uh, in order to make the imperfect ritual stone, what you're going to need is you're going to need a blood orb in the center. And I think it's obsidian in the corners. And then smooth stone and like that. Yep, there we go. The imperfect ritual stone. That simple. 
Okay, now when it comes to the Imperfect Ritual Stone, you actually have a couple of things you can do with it. Uh, the one thing that we're going to be worrying about at this point is changing it into Knight. Okay, so we're going to put the Imperfect Ritual Stone, and depending on what block you put above the Imperfect Ritual Stone will determine what it does. Okay, so by doing this, when I right click on it, we should get a Lightning Strike, and it should be instantly turned into Knight. Oh, except for the fire. I forgot the fire. I have to be careful doing that. I don't want to burn my house down. All right, so there we go. Now we are back tonight, and we are back on the hunt. Let's see how this thing works. Not bad. I was going to add flame to it, but honestly, the flame arrows get really annoying to have laying around. So uh, we're just going to stick with just normal power. And yeah, so we're on the hunt. We'll be back with more Ender Pearls. Alrighty, we're back and we're getting the QED put together now. And you would not believe how much effort it took to get more Ender Pearls. It was actually quite amazing. Uh, like, seriously, I was quite impressed at how long it took. I went through five night cycles. I went around, went out, hunted around, and then when the sun came up, it came back and turned it back night again. And then I had to go back out, hunt around. I mean, it, it took a long time. A lot longer than I expected it would. But, uh, got it done. So, yay. Uh, let's see. Finish making these. And there. Now we have the QED and we have the Enderflux Crystals. Uh, the Enderflux Crystals are basically going to feed, quote-unquote, power to the QED, Okay. Uh, actually, you know what? I think I'd rather have the QED on the outer edge. Let's put it here. Which, by the way, if you actually look at the Wayla uh, definition of the QED, it uh, it's different every time. Uh, it actually says here it's the quantum emission decompiler. Now it is the quantum entanglement device. Now it is the quantum ender device. Quantum Entanglement Diviner. Uh, one of them is the um, quite expensive decoration. That one was pretty fun. Anyway, so now we're going to make the markers. <laughs> Sorry, I get distracted easily. All right, so the markers are going to require the Ender Pearl and two Infused Obsidian on each. We're going to need a total of three markers. And we have... Now we got to make some more. Anyway, as they're working, you get this noise and you see the particle effects being sent into it. Um... I don't know if you can hear that or not, but uh, depending on how many of these uh, Enderflux crystals you have determines how fast this thing works. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, doing anything in this thing takes a long time, so you want to have more than one crystal. That's why I went ahead and just made extras, because otherwise it would take absolutely forever. So now that we've got this part done, we can go ahead and get the boundary set up. There's the first one. And even with five of these, this is actually taking quite a bit of time. So let's see. Let's grab. Come on. Give me one more. And I can go ahead and start setting up. All right. So now that we have two, the third one can cook while I go do this. Uh, we're going to establish the boundary by placing an ender marker here in the front. Now, we want to keep in line with this. So we're going to go out this direction. This is Z-671 and a Y level of 69. So 671, 69. So let's head out this way, and as long as we come back to 671, and on the uh, Y level 69, then we should be able to place this and it will function. So this should be far enough. This will hold us for quite a while. Uh, 671. Yep, there we go, at level 69. Now, when you place it, you know you got it right because you'll see the particle effects. If I were to place this a different place, real quick, let's just do that. If we place it here, you can see there's no particle effects, and that's showing that you did not place it in a viable spot, so it will not work in that location. But here, we have the particle effects showing that it is connected to the one back over at the house. So that is all good. Let's go grab the third one, and we're going to go out a different direction. Now, I'm doing it out this direction for a reason. Okay, uh, This is pretty much from this corner of the house. There's only This is the only safe direction I can go without running into stuff I've already been you know, making. If I go out that way, I'm going to run into this and the stuff underneath. If I go out this way, obviously my house. If 
I go out that way, then I've got the spawner and all the stuff underneath it. So this is the corner I'm going to use because it is safe to use. And I won't have to worry about running into anything or breaking anything that I don't want broken. So I guess I'll put this in the random block section. Actually, let's just go ahead and toss the rest of the stuff in here as well. So yay, I've got to clean some of this stuff out. All right, so now that we've got that going, we can go ahead and place this other marker and it's going to be on the X536. So X536 on Y level 69. Let's just head out this way a little bit. We're just going to let this go for a little bit. What did I say? 639? I think it was 639. No, five, 539? Ah, oh, crap. Um, 536? Ah, oh, nuts. I don't remember now. You know what? We're just going to... I don't know. Over here, Y level 68, Y level 69. There? Ha! I mean, <clears throat> X level 536, you know. D d yeah, that's... Mm -hmm, that was it. I, I knew that. Anyway, um, so the cool thing about the Ender Quarry is that as it works, it replaces anything that it takes with dirt. Okay, so this is going to mine everything under the ground that uh, that's going to be useful and, and some stuff that isn't, but it's going to replace it with dirt. So it's not going to actually alter the terrain or cause any strange things to happen. It's just going to go ahead and replace the stuff that's down there with dirt. So if I ever go digging in this area i'll be like why is it only dirt over here and then i'll be like oh yeah because of the ender quarry all right so now that's set to go now there's two other things that we need uh we need first off to give it power and second off to give it somewhere to put the stuff that it mines so i'm going to use this gold chest for the moment i will have probably a diamond chest at some point for it but uh we're just going to put that there and now we need to hook up power uh, for the purposes we have right now, we have, actually, we've got, uh, we've got 15 million RF right here. Let's, now, I'm not going to do this uh, as, a, as a main setup, because if I were to hook into my main power supply and have it be the supply for this ender quarry, it would drain my power system pretty much instantly. Like, here, I'll, I'll just show you, because for the purpose of this functioning, I want to show you this. But, uh, actually, this is going to be hilarious. Watch this. It is draining 4,800 RF per tick. Okay, now, it is draining 4,800 RF per tick because this... Oh, actually, oh, this can hold 5,120. It's not draining that much. Oh, yeah, but look at it go. You can actually watch that thing just... All right, so anyway... It's basically draining out. It's draining it that fast, by the way, because it's filling the internal buffer here. It's up to uh, to three million RF in the internal buffer. But now, if while it's running, if we right-click it, it will say it is okay. We've already mined 270 blocks that fast. Okay, that's how quick we're going here. And this is going to be a lot of it's going to be cobblestone. But hey, it's mining while I do other things, right? So who cares? Um, so we're getting a lot of really good stuff here. And it says, they like said, we're mining at 424.58.670. So 424.670 is where we're currently mining at. So let's see, 424, it's going to be out this way, 670. Okay, so it's going to be in this corner where we place this. And we should be able to go out here, I'm hoping, and see the, uh, the particle effects that it puts off when it actually mines. Okay, it was... 424, 670. Oh, there it is, right there. Uh, it was. Where'd it go? Ah, there it is. As you can see, you're seeing the actual uh, particle effects coming up out of the ground right here, and it's showing you that it's working in this column currently. Okay, and it's probably working its way that way. Yep, sure is. All right, and that is basically showing you where the mining is taking place. So that's pretty much it. We've got this functioning. We're getting stuff in. Um, like I said, this is draining my system really, really fast. So we're going to have to give this thing its own power supply. And, uh, of course, we're going to have to do something with the products of this. I mean, right now I can take the stuff out of here and go put it in manually. 
but uh, eh, I don't want to do it manually. I want it to automatically do it for me. So that's going to be pretty awesome. All right, so we've got the, the internal buffer fixed up, but we are still, let's see, 700 RF per tick roughly to run this thing at full capacity. So yeah, 700 RF per tick. Uh, I, there's no way that I'm going to be able to make something that's going to generate 700 RF per tick uh, to run it at full speed. On the plus side, if I don't run it at full speed, it'll just mine a little bit slower. So you know, until I get a massive power system going, uh, we'll just have to, to deal with that. And uh, of course, I'll deal with you in a minute. Uh, we'll have to get that going. Next episode, uh, we're going to build the power system that's going to run this. Uh, I'm thinking about using dynamos from uh, thermal expansion. Uh, so we're going to do that. And we're probably also going to go ahead and automatically sort and process anything that it happens to dig up. That sounds like a pretty good idea. Yeah, let's do that. So until next time, this is Geronitis signing off on episode 25 of my Let's Play series. Like me if you like me, subscribe if you want to see what I get into next, and as always, help spread the gaming!